Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, he is 36 years old, and he shares his story how recently he ended up dumping his girlfriend and blocking her, a girlfriend of a whopping two or three weeks, after she crossed one of his boundaries. You're going to see that when he started dating her, she was trying to push the relationship, but he wasn't having it. No freaking way. But eventually, after some time period, he's like, all right, I'll give her a chance, but I'm going to lay out some boundaries, like no, no girls' nights, girl weekends, no guy friends, that type of thing. And she, of course, agrees. But then, big surprise, it only takes her a short period of time to start testing him. And you're going to see he handles it just right. I'll be going to show you guys that you got to enforce the boundaries. you got to lay out boundaries, but also enforce them and prepare to walk if she doesn't uh, respect you. And that's just how it has to be. But I'm also doing this as an example to show you how guys can really learn from this type of material, learn from their mistakes, and really do great. This guy previously wrote me last year about a marriage he got out because he was married to a single MOM. A single MOM of three kids. He was that guy and made a lot of mistakes and as you can imagine got burned, but he's learned. And so he really is learning. So I'm really enjoying, I enjoyed reading this to show you how much progress he's made over time. But before I get into this, real quick, I got an email from a subscriber over in Sweden who shares a story how he uh, met a gal who wanted to have an open, open who wanted to date him and claimed she was in an open relationship with her husband, but then finds out that she's full of crap and busts her and turns her into the husband. This guy says, uh, real quick, he says, uh, Hi, SSM. I'm a 25-year-old male from Sweden. I'm studying engineering and thought you'd be interested in my current drama. So for a little backstory here... I've been through a number of disastrous relationships, and you actually saved me from my last one. Uh, this is when she asked for an open relationship, and I walked. So now I only do hookups, focus on my studies, and I've become a well-built Viking through the gym and good diet. Good job, man. I'm sorry I went through all that bull crap before, but you learned. And yeah, you have to walk when they cross the line, period. And then bringing up open relationships, done. Move on. So a week or so ago, I matched with a 33-year-old married woman on Tinder. I would have been like, nope, I don't, care if you, I don't care if you say you have an open relationship. No, no married women. The age was a bit above what I usually go for, but she was a hot redhead, and even by Scandinavian standards, an eight. Dude, when I was 22, I was banging. I had this friends with benefits relationship with a 19-year-old redhead from Sweden. She was over here as a nanny for like six months or something like that, and uh, she was a hottie, so I understand it. Hopefully, I don't have some 23 or 24-year-old child named Bjorn over in your country right now knocking on my door and saying, Daddy, uh, I thought we would make some fire together. After some talking, flirting, and other explicit questions, she revealed that she was looking for friends with benefits and she was in an open relationship or open marriage and there'd be no problems to meet up at my place for the first time. Uh-huh. Married woman you met on Tinder. And claims, oh, everything's cool, no problem at all. I'm, you obviously learned. As a rule, I always ask the husband of, or a boyfriend if the offer is advised, advertised, if you know what I mean. She refused and said that they didn't want to meet their respective lovers or know about them. This made me suspicious. So, as I didn't want to expose myself, I looked up the husband online. All your information, phone numbers, and addresses is public and easily accessible through a Google search here in Sweden, including spouses. Well, that's screwed up. After finding him, I usually uh, I use my uh, alternate Facebook account to message him, asking my question. Saying he was confused was an understatement. So, he had no idea. This poor guy. After some explanations, showing proof, a lot of convincing, and consoling this poor unknowing cuck, I came to the following conclusions. Number one. Their marriage wasn't open, and number two, they hadn't had SCX in two years because she was never in the mood. She was very much in the mood with me, though. Shocker. He asked me what to do, and I said check her phone, copy every dirty message, and send it to her friends and family so he can control the narrative. I did not stay for the fireworks. I blocked her, and I'm moving on. I don't want to be part of their drama more than needed. At least now I know I cured her husband's chronic blindness. Hope this was entertaining, and once again, thanks for all your advice, and hope you're doing well. Bro, you did the right thing. But let me just suggest going forward, if you're focusing on you, your studies, the gym, and you like to hook up with chicks, simply avoid the married woman. 
I don't care what they say. I don't, I don't even care if they say they're in open marriage and their husband's cool with it. You just don't need that drama. Just find some single chicks and go from there. But good job, good man, you handled it well. Okay, on to the main story. This guy says here, uh, hey, this is Sam. Merry Christmas and early happy birthday to you. I'm the guy that wrote you la la last August about how I've been married for six years to a single MOM of three kids. I tried to being a stay-at-home dad, and things ended badly. Yes, they did, my man. They always do. So, I've been single now for over three years now, focusing on my job and getting myself a br to break my weak-minded conditioning. I'd like to tell you about my first relationship attempt since my awakening, and ask you to tell me how I've done. <clears throat> I'm honestly hoping not to get earn any smacks, but I have a feeling I won't be walking away from this totally unscathed. Dude, nope. You did a lot of things right in this story, and I'm proud of you, and you're learning. But you did some things wrong, and get your face ready, because they're getting some smacking. For the purposes of this story, I believe I used the name John before, and that's what you can call me here. As previously mentioned, I do have a delivery job that sends me to approximately 30 gas stations and grocery stores a day. It gives me many great opportunities to meet new people, and as per your advice, I worked on sparking a random conversation with people to try to better my social skills. Good. I recall that now. You need some work in that department. Practice, 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 guys. Uh, this is where I, we will meet Katie. Obviously a code name. Katie was one of the cashiers at one of my stores, whom I found fairly attractive, maybe a 7 in my opinion. However, she is a 30-year-old single MOM, so I had absolutely no intentions of anything serious happening between her and I. Very good. You learned. But even then, if these are stores on your delivery routes, someone your company does business with, it's a bad idea to try to strike up any kind of relationship with one of the gals that works in those stores. You, you see what I mean here. Don't let anything jeopardize business in your career. I learned from my previous mistake. Uh, Katie lived in a fairly interesting life, and through our conversations, I learned that she had, a, she had farmland with cats and dogs, a goat, and two cows. Much like yourself, I'm an animal lover, and I really wanted to meet her two cows, as well as to use it as a chance to spend some time with her. Smack! I know you said she's a single MOM, and you're like, nope, 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 not going there. But spend some time with her, and all of a sudden that could go right out the door and let uh, the dude down south do all the thinking for you. So I wouldn't have done that. But I'm, I'm glad at least you're recognizing, nope, 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 not going there. Cows, huh? Hey, to each their own. I think you say you're from Pennsylvania, and I'm from Pennsylvania, and believe me, fucking cows everywhere. At least out in the country. Bucks County. Uh, long story short, she and I were planning a meeting up to hang out. The day comes that we are going to meet up, and she tells me that she is going to bring her roommate with her because she has a boyfriend and wants to keep things above board. Okay, so I asked her who her roommate is. Curious, it had been someone I've seen around the store before. She tells me her name is Alex, another code name, and I asked if she, if she was the cute blonde cashier at the store, and she confirmed that it was. Dude, so now this is a girl you're interested in, her friend, who also works in the store that your company does business with. Can you see what will happen if you potentially hook up or date this girl, Alex? That's the code name. Things don't go well. She starts raising holy hell, and it could impact your job. It's a bad idea. All right, so Katie has a boyfriend. Alex is single. I'm still interested. Plus, I'm going to go get to hang out with some cows, so I'm still interested. Alex, by the way, is what you call a typical Midwestern girl. She was cute, freckles all over, maybe 10 pounds overweight, but trust me when I say in all the right places. And she's 23 years old. Did I mention I'm 36? I told Katie I was still interested because I definitely thought Alex was pretty cute. Dude, don't go telling her friend how amazing and cute and hot and all that shit that you think her friend is. Because she'll tell her friend, and her friend will immediately think, oh... This guy's hot for me. I already have leverage. You don't want them to have leverage. Literally less than a minute after telling Katie that I thought Alex was cute, I get a friend request from, from Alex on Facebook. So, of course, we spark up a conversation. I kept it short and sweet, and I told her how I always thought she was cute. But I let her know I wasn't really pursuing anything serious at the moment and was wanting to keep things casual. Well, okay, you redeemed yourself by at least making it clear. Not interested in anything serious. That to women is like moths to a flame. Like, ooh, challenge. 
Now, you letting her know you think she's cute obviously works, but in a lot of cases, gives them too much leverage and power. At the very least, she had, sounds like pretty high interest in you. Uh, she told me that was fine with that, and she had gotten out of a relationship not that long ago and wasn't looking to get something serious. I said, okay, cool, and we were on the same page. So I get to the place, and yes, I get to feed her cows. They are awesome. Dude, what is with you and the cows? Yes, the first night we did end up hooking up. Okay, so bravo to you for obviously playing your cards right so you can nail this cute chick who's 13 years younger than you that you like the first night. Cool. But this ain't girlfriend material. Uh-uh-uh, you know the rules. And watch this. And yes, I did bring home my own protection. Here's where things start to get more interesting, though. What? Things got interesting with a girl you hooked up with on the first date? Shocker. The next morning, Alex asked me if I wanted to go hang out a little bit more because they were planning on going bowling the next day. I agreed, as I've always loved bowling. I wouldn't have hung out with her the next day because it tells her your schedule's wide open to hang out and that you really like her. Once a week, guys. As we are pulling into the parking lot, she informs me that her mom is going to be there too and I get to meet her. He says, wow, red flag. Yep. However, I wasn't going to let something like that ruin a perfectly good day of bowling. So I dealt with it. I put on the charm and her mom really seemed to like me. Well, her, her mom probably wanted to do you. We end up meeting up once a week or so after, thereafter for about three months. Her coming to my place mostly after this, after this point. When she's, after this point where she started asking if I saw things ever becoming serious between us. So, you're seeing her once a week? Good. She's coming to your place most of the time on your turf? Good. She's pressing for a relationship? Good. Not the other way around. But what I tell you, you can't turn an HOE into a housewife on the first freaking date you hooked up, so to me, that's just not the way to go. But if it's casual and you're wearing protection and you're protecting yourself, okay, but just be careful. I told her honestly, I did enjoy spending time with her, but I felt I really didn't know her well all that well, so I couldn't say. She started telling me more about her life, and OSSM, there are some real red flags here. Really, I never would have guessed. She had been, uh, had bad things happen to her when she was young by a family member. You guys catch my drift. Not her fault, I know, but still. And it seemed like every one of her exes had a, was always the problem. Imagine that. We broke up, but it wasn't my problem. It was his fault. However, her parents had been married for 26 years, and they were still married. So that was kind of a green flag to me. She is a church girl. Although you'd never know it if you saw how she was in bed. I mean, all the things my ex-wife wouldn't do. Alex was more than eager to do. And I almost hate to say this, but after we got done, I kept hearing your voice in my head saying she's trying to rope you in with SEX. So weird. So weird as that may sound, you literally stayed with me through this. And your influence kept me from falling for her and getting too attached. Please tell me you're not thinking of me when you're getting head from this girl or plowing this girl. Please tell me my face is not in your mind when you're taking care of business. I'm assuming after when you're going to make stupid mis stupid decisions. Well, anyhow, the church girl, and she's wild, willing to do everything you want in the bed and more. Great, you're having fun with her. And also, by the way, some of the most wild girls I ever knew were church girls. Uh, a few weeks after those conversations, we went out to eat at a hibachi restaurant. Not to impress her, but because I just generally love hibachi grills. Good. Do what you want to do. And she asked me again what I thought about becoming exclusive. I told at this point that if she really wanted to be my girlfriend, that she had to understand that I have boundaries that I will not tolerate being broken. Good for you for saying that, the boundaries, and smack for thinking you're going to turn her into a girlfriend. That's dumb. No. No, no, no. Keep it casual. And if she doesn't like it, she can walk. And you'll find somebody else. She said she respected a man with boundaries and asked what they were. Yeah, you're showing your balls. And don't give a shit. So, based off my previous experience of relationships and what I've seen on this channel, here is my list of boundaries that I've given her. Number one. No girls' nights out. None. No going to bars or clubs without me. No out-of-state trips. None of that. 
I would never tell her that she can't do those things, but if she does, I told her that I would respond by choosing to be single. Yes, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling what I'm going to do if you cross these boundaries. There you go. Then they can't tell you're being controlling or anything like that because I'm not telling you what to do. Uh, I said, if you want to act single, stay single. If you want to be in a relationship, act like you're in a relationship. Number two, I will not be in a relationship with a gal that feels the need to seek attention and validation from other men, so there's no need to post revealing pictures online. Number three, I told her that although you must have trust in a relationship, trust is earned. There will be an open phone policy going both ways, because the secrets of the world are, are kept on a girl's phone. Yes, exactly. Hey, you can see my phone anytime. So I can see yours. Number four, no guy friends. I told her that since all men want to have SCX, they aren't j truly just a friend. They're waiting for their chance to have SCX with you. She said she had no problem with that, and she always felt the same way and had never had any guy friends. Yes, all guys want to nail the girls. Duh. And guess what? They fucking know it. Come on here. Number five, I told her my career comes first, and she will never come before it. Yes, your career, your purpose, whatever that is, always comes before women. Guys, your purpose and your goals and ambitions are number one. And then you can mix in depending on what's important to you. Obviously, your health and your, your family and your dog and the gym. And she's at the bottom. Because guess what? There's 8 billion people on the planet, half are women. And guess what? They're easily replaceable. Once you have your shit together, guys, and you understand that, and you got some things going for yourselves... You can replace them. End of story. And those of you that are in that place right now have reached that point. You know what I'm talking about. She actually agreed to all my conditions. I wasn't surprised, but I also wasn't expecting much. She agreed probably for one of two reasons. Either, number one, she planned to break him anyway. Or two, in that moment, and I want to emphasize in that moment, because she's been chasing you to get into a relationship with her so long, she was actually agreeing with, like, like she was thinking, okay, I'll go with this because I want this guy so bad. But one piece of advice, one piece of advice from my father gave me when I was young was in everything in life, you go into it with the high hopes and low expectations. That way you'll never be disappointed. I had high hopes that she could be a decent girlfriend, but considering the state of dating in 2023, I had very low expectations that it would last. He says two weeks. I'm not kidding. That's all it took. In two weeks before her true colors started to show. I can tell you what's going on. It's called, she really liked you. You made it clear from the beginning. Not into a relationship. Nothing serious. She's thinking, ooh, challenge. You weren't pursuing her. You were seeing her once a week. You made her come to you. She was doing all the stuff in the sack that you wanted and more because she wanted to rope you in. And she wanted you and she had high attraction, high interest. She chased the relationship, and finally you gave her the relationship, and it's like, boom, I got this guy, and now the bullshit can start. Two weeks. He says she was drinking every night with Katie. They weren't drinking to get, they uh, weren't drinking to, hang on, they weren't drinking to get drunk, but every single night, without fail, she was drinking. It was a home, which to me isn't a big problem but it made me uncomfortable. Alex had expressed interest in becoming a mother within the next five years or so, which I told her could be a possibility if she played her cards right, but I was in no rush. Smack. That's for making her a girlfriend when you can't turn an HO into a housewife, and that's also for even thinking, entertaining the possibility this girl could be, you know, a, a mother of your children material, wife material. No fucking way, man. And now she's suddenly boozing it up all the time. Do you really want that as your wife? I was not, however, okay with the idea of the mother of my kids feeling the need to drink on a nightly basis. That's not good parenting in my opinion. My mother is an alcoholic. I'll be damned if I let my kids be raised by the same type of woman. Exactly. And be careful how interesting that you found this gal attractive and you've kept her around when she obviously has some behavior patterns like your mother. It's always amazing how guys end up, at least without realizing it, with gals like their mother or girls with like their father. So Thanksgiving night, I'm spending it with my brother and she's with Katie. She's been drinking again. I told her I was not okay with the frequency with which she drinks, especially as she wanted to be the mother of my kids. 
Her reply was that she has the right to make her own choices, and I need to respect her decisions. I told her that she absolutely does, but I also have the right to be single, and she can respect that decision. She said, and I quote, a woman has not... A woman was not made to serve a man. She was made to be an equal to a man. <laughs> My reply, and that's all I need to hear, have a good night. And then I blocked her. She hasn't actually tried reaching out to me, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happens at some point in the future. She will reach out to you. And good job for you. Right there making it clear and saying what you said, and you're done with her. The drinking wasn't in your initial set of boundaries, but obviously there's a problem bothered you and you made that clear. And she's not respecting that. So you walk. End of story. You can replace her ass. I want to thank you, SSM, and it had not been for you in the community, I'm pretty sure I would have gotten overly attached to this girl and end up either tolerating her, her breaking my boundaries or be heartbroken at this point. But thanks to you in the community, I was able to keep up my walls and not allow myself to get hurt. Instead, I've been taking my frustrations out in the gym, and so keeping on my, my mind focused on my job. So tell me, how did I do? I think, I liked, I think I've improved quite a bit from the blue pill sucker that allowed me a single MOM to use me six years as a payback and babysitter. Oh, and English is my first language, so I apologize for any errors and my overall inability to write a coherent thought. Merry Christmas, brothers. Well, belay Merry Christmas. He wrote this weeks ago, so like I told you guys, it takes a while to get to this. So bro, you did things right, and you did things wrong. But you did more things right, and it ended on a high note. You shouldn't have gotten involved with a chick who works in one of the many stores that you do deliveries. That could cause a problem for your job. You don't need that shit. So in the future, I got no problem with you on, on the job making your deliveries, because you do like 30-something a day, stores, whatever. To help your social skills, chit-chat, have a good time, fine. Don't date any girls that are in those stores because that can affect your job. You said your purpose and your job comes first, your career. Well, right there. So that was a mistake. But I'm also glad when you then met her, you made clear no, no, uh uh, no relationships. And look what happened. You got laid. So, okay, good job. You were able to seal the deal on the first date or first gathering, if you will, with a chick 13 years younger. Okay, that, you're improving. Good job laying out the boundaries. Telling her, okay, fine, if you want to have a relationship, here are my terms. Good for you for doing that. And good for you for lay, for ending it with her when she wouldn't uh, abide by your rules. Because, yeah, you know, it's like, hey, I'm not controlling. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do if these boundaries aren't respected, period. So you did a lot more right than wrong. So in the future, just do not... Anybody you, you do business with as your company, and also a gal that you meet on, you hook up with the first date, that ain't girl for material. So that's the other thing you did wrong. Shouldn't have gotten exclusive with her, even if it was for like two or three weeks. But aside from that, you really are improving, and so that's awesome. And it goes to show you guys, you can be as clueless as this can be, but a bad experience and really learning, watching these videos, hearing these stories, and putting it into practice in your life, you can improve. So you're, you're, you're doing great. I'm really proud of you. And by the way, since this, you said this happened around Thanksgiving, so today is Jan. What the hell today? Today's January eighth, I think. So we're looking at about six weeks, give or take, since Thanksgiving. You'll probably hear from her again. Either she'll chase after you because you know she's not used to guys dumping her, and you know girls tend to get obsessed over guys that reject them. Or she'll turn into a total psycho and try to make your life a living hell for rejecting her, which can then impact your job since you get my points. So that's why. So be careful. But either way, you'll probably hear from her again and don't get involved with her. I don't care how great the pussy is, don't get involved with her. And because if you do, I will find you and smack the shit out of you. So good job, man. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Then just think about this. Give this guy a shout out. Give him some praise for he's moving along because believe me, with his previous relationship, his previous marriage to the single MON with three kids, he has definitely come a long way. Give him some praise and give him some smacks for getting a relationship with the HOE. And make sure you like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.